Hello, welcome to part 23 of 30 Ways to Become an Empowered Artist. I'm Bob Baker. On this video, I'm going to talk to you about something that I call the Fan Engagement Triangle. Something very important you're going to need for your career and your longevity as a creative person. Before I jump into that, I just want to ask for your support in the artist empowerment movement. It's a fan funding campaign, a crowdsourcing campaign that I am on. And the first stage of it officially ends on July 2nd, 2014. So it may just be a couple of days away when you're listening to this. So click the link below this video or somewhere on this page to find out how you can get involved and support the campaign. You would be helping me create and publish my next book called The Empowered Artist, but you'd also be participating in a larger movement to inspire and empower creative people around the globe to step into their power. So click the link to find out more, and if it's after July 2nd, please click it anyway because you can find out details about how to get involved even after that date. It's an ongoing activity. So let's talk about this fan engagement triangle and why it's important to your career as a musician or a writer or a visual artist, etc., etc. So I'll explain what this is by briefly going over the evolution of communication between artists and fans and all that good stuff. So a couple of decades ago or so, in the old school method of media and entertainment, uh, when you basically had uh, authors and musicians and creative people who were backed by a corporate entity, record labels, book publishers, film studios, etc., for the most part, a big uh, part of marketing was a one-directional sort of activity. Let's say that up here is the uh, artist or the uh, author, the entertainer, well-known creative person up here, and the company that they're associated with. And a lot of their marketing and communication was one-directional. So there would be announcements, there would be ads, and there would be media interviews that would be directed to the masses that would then reach uh, the population and hopefully the target audience of that particular artist or author. And that's how the word got out about a new book or a new album or a tour or a new film production of some kind. So the communication basically flowed in one direction from the artist to their representative through the media down to the people. All right, so in this digital era that we live in, especially if you're more of an independent, up-and-coming artist, author, filmmaker, etc., there's a two-way communication stream that can take place. People can reach you because you're more accessible. They can email you. They can post something on your Facebook page. They can tweet at you, and so on. And this is a good thing. You want to communicate and be accessible to your fans while you're at a stage where you can do that. So you are communicating to them through social media and email and live appearances and all this stuff. And they're able to communicate back at you either face to face or via email and all those ways that I just mentioned. And it's very important in this equation for you to acknowledge those efforts by them to communicate with you. Respond to your emails, acknowledge and like and comment back when they reach out to you in social media, etc. It's very important that your fans and supporters should feel like, oh, wow, they saw that thing that I posted. They got the message. They even said thank you or responded back. That makes people feel good. They want to support you even more. But there's one more part of this equation that I think is very, very important to point out. So now you've got this two-way. It's from the artist down to the fan, the fan to the artist, back and forth, right? But it's also crucial that you realize that your fans can also communicate with each other. And this creates then the fan engagement triangle that I mentioned at the beginning. So you got the artist up here, you got one fan or many fans down here, another fan over here. So not only are you communicating with them, they're communicating back to you, but they're also communicating with each other. And this is vitally important because you're then creating a community of people who are following you. In recent years, people have referred to it as a tribe. You are the leader of this tribe. And you're the reason that this tribe was formed. So they're following you, but they also have a lot of things in common. And so when you give them the opportunity, they will communicate with each other, form a community, and that secures your longevity and your future as an artist. There's so many examples of this over the years, but the classic one that comes to mind is the Grateful Dead. I mean, you're familiar with the term deadheads, right? These are people that went from city to city and followed the Grateful Dead whenever they toured. And so the hardcore fans of that band not only went because they loved the artists and they loved the music, but they loved the people that they got to hang out with at their live performances. Same could be said for Jimmy Buffett and the Parrotheads. 
I even remember on a local level decades ago when I used to go out and be more active going out and seeing bands in the local clubs here in St. Louis. There were a couple of bands in particular where sometimes I would go with friends, but sometimes I would just go down and see them myself because I knew when I walked into the room, there'd be a whole group of people there that I already knew, that I already had relationships with. Their following became a community of people who all knew and sort of appreciated each other. It's kind of like the old sitcom Cheers, where everybody knows your name. And so ideally, you want to try to encourage this sort of community building to happen. So I've been using examples of live events where this takes place, and certainly you should foster that if you have a live component to what you do. But you can encourage that even in the online and the digital realm. Some of the things that you can do is to ask questions, ask people to comment below your video or your blog post or your Facebook update. On Twitter and many other social sites these days, you can ask people to use hashtags so they can follow the same conversation. And encourage people to not only communicate with you, but with each other. And at your live and virtual events, create situations where you kind of force them maybe to communicate with each other. Have them break up into groups or pairs or whatever, or have some kind of a fun game where they have to meet someone that they didn't know before they arrived that night. You could possibly create a forum or something on your website where people can congregate. A lot of artists these days are encouraging their fans to co-create and co-promote with them. They're asking people to create artwork for t-shirts, asking them to vote on designs for the new album or the new book. So the whole point is to get people to engage with you and each other. So as you can see, marketing is much more, as I mentioned before, oh, that rhymes, it's much more than just simply making announcements. You're not just shouting out from on high and spraying your message over the masses and then they're adoring you as a result. No, it's you're communicating with them, they're communicating back to you, but they're also communicating with each other, hence you formed the fan engagement triangle. Sound good? So think about ways that you can encourage that three-way form of communication. And believe me, this works no matter what your creative discipline. It works for musicians, it works for writers and authors, it works for visual artists, performers, designers, filmmakers, and on and on. I hope you found this helpful. If you think you know someone who might benefit from hearing this message, please share this video or this audio podcast with them. And since we're so close to the deadline when I'm posting this, please check out the link to the uh, Artist Empowerment Movement and Book Launch Fan Funding Campaign. There's a mouthful for you. I'd really appreciate your support, and I'd love for you to get involved in this movement, so please click the link to find out more about it. All right, that's it for part 23. I'll be back with part 24 tomorrow. I'm Bob Baker saying so long for now.